G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, so, Sunday sort of lunchtime here in Australia and I found an interesting article. So, is this maybe the reason that we saw the crash over the weekend? Because everything seemed to be pretty positive and there wasn't really too much indicating that there should be a pullback and then we had one. And again, it wasn't a massive one though, but it was just, you know, a reasonable one and things seemed to have slightly recovered. But let's have a look. 4.2 billion dollars in crypto seized by Chinese authorities from plus token Ponzi scheme so if you haven't been around for a while this is in 2018 so funny funnily enough this was in a bear market uh, this Ponzi scheme came out where you could send I think it was basically any crypto just about but I think mainly it was EOS uh, ethereum and Bitcoin that were sent uh, and 4.2 billion dollars worth and so it seems as though the Chinese government have caught up with these uh, people uh, and taken that cryptocurrency. And there is rumors uh, sort of getting around that the Chinese put it on the market and sold it. And that's what caused uh, sort of the crash, I guess. Now, that's not confirmed. I don't know that for a fact. Uh, it is a fact that they've been seized. Whether they sold them or not, I don't know. But just the fact that the Chinese seized this would have been likely enough to put a bit of a scare in the market and may have played a part in why we had that retracement. Look, the retracement could just simply be people, uh, could just simply be people taking profits because they're in profits, but it also could have been this. So let's have a bit of a read. Crypto investors are panicking today after discovering that Chinese authorities seized around 4.2 billion in cryptocurrencies from the Plus Token Ponzi scheme. Local news platforms report that the police finally took action after receiving a court order created to uh, prosecute the scammers. Or yeah, I think that should have been prosecute the scammers. As a reminder, Plus Token is a scam eerily similar to the other f famous Ponzi schemes such as BitConnect and OneCoin. So there's a lot of these out there. There'll be these platforms saying invest in us and we'll guarantee you X amount of return from uh, these coins and they'll give you their own coin back like it's actually worth something uh, a lot of the time and turns out it's not but even look sometimes they tell you they'll pay you back in bitcoin or whatever and it's that old saying if it's too good if it sounds like it's too good to be true it probably is but look in saying that you need to be careful in cryptocurrencies because banks are offering 0 0.25 or 15 percent interest some are even at negative ratings and we have a number of crypto places that again you know you can make four percent five percent six percent on your crypto at the moment so you know, I can't put my hand on my heart and say it's 100% true, but things like BlockFi and Compound and Celsius, they all seem pretty legit. Now, Compound did have a uh, an issue over the weekend uh, with an Oracle. Uh, I think they've fixed that, but I mean, BlockFi, they're properly regulated, just like any other banking uh, sort of platform is. So, I, you know, I personally think they're legit, and there's a link down in my... Uh, about me section below if you want to join up for BlockFi and put your money in there uh, and earn some interest and your cryptocurrencies you can do both they have uh, USDC the Gemini dollar Paxos gold Bitcoin Litecoin and Ethereum so you can earn interest on all of those uh, and so yeah I like BlockFi but you know do your own research before you get involved into any of that kind of stuff so yeah, 18%, uh, the token offered up to 18% pro uh, in profitable returns per month. Well, there you go, 18% per month. That's a little bit unlikely. You know, someone who's offering, you know, maybe 18% if you're lucky per year might be able to do that. 18% per month, yeah, unlikely. So anyway, the Chinese government seized all these and there's rumors that they put it on the market and sold it. And that happened over this weekend. Again, that's not confirmed that I know of. That's just some rumors that are getting around. And if that's true, I would say that likely has played a part uh, in why the prices went down. Now, look, it may not be, though. Again, it may simply just be some people took some profits because we got to basically the all-time highs. I think we got to 19,400, and I think it's 19,000, maybe 600 was the all-time high back in 2018. So that would be some people who simply cashed out because they bought at the top and they just over it, waiting three years to make their money back. They weren't willing to wait any longer. Fair enough, can't blame them for that. Three years at a loss, you finally can get your money back. Most people are probably going to take that money. Uh, and again, you know, people who bought at $3,000, 
Uh, I mean, they didn't get it for 3,000. I think 3,800 is what it got down to in the low, not uh, long after the pandemic crash. And so now up at 19,000, they're probably pretty happy to take some profits. I'm sure they didn't sell, sell all their Bitcoin. They would have held on to uh, probably a majority of it because they see it going up further. But again, maybe I'm wrong and they just simply sold out. But I think this may have something to do with why the markets went down so hard. But look, it has created some good opportunities though. At least in my personal opinion, not financial advice. I have to keep saying that. I'm not a financial advisor. Let's go over to CoinGecko. All right, this is a couple of minutes old. So 534 billion, it's up 3.1% and Bitcoin sitting at 17.6. All right, let's refresh and see what's happened. So there we go. It's going up again a little bit and Bitcoin's going up. So as I said in my video yesterday, we had a couple of days worth of red. Generally, we're not going to get much more than a week uh, in a bull market uh, out of sort of downturns. They can last longer. Sometimes you might get two or three weeks. You know, it kind of ebbs and flows, but slowly goes down. But on average, seven days, we're already halfway to there. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that means it's all over and there can't be any more downside. But maybe that Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the rest of it that the Chinese government had and has now sold off, possibly. Uh, is all done and it's all just been bought up and we're uh, heading back sort of upwards again so we'll just have to keep an eye out but gas prices 12 not too bad BTC dominance again around that kind of 61 percent but we can see there's a lot of green particularly over the last you know sort of 24 hours but seven days we still see at least you know some things in the red now there we go Stella did have a bit of a pullback it was always going to uh, only 80 percent so yeah, it's had a pullback, but look, still possibly going up. Let's have a look. What are the big gainers for the last 24 hours? Numerair, Horizon Cardano, it's on quite a run. So well done. We can see a lot of green here and over the last seven days. Verge continues to go up, so nice. Uh, I did sell off half of my Verge. I'm kind of wishing I didn't now, but it had been one of my underperformers and I put it into some uh, USD uh, and some other things. XRP. Nice, starting to recover some of the losses. It was up around 70 cents. So now it's 61 cents, got down to about 54 cents, I think, 55 cents. I think maybe even 49 cents, uh, I heard someone say. But still, generally, look at all this green. So we're recovering after these losses uh, quite well. But what about losses? Do we have losses? We do, very small amounts. So Stellar, again, lost 6%. It was up 137%. So I think Stella will quite possibly come down a little bit. So I did take some profits from some of my Stella. Something goes up 134% in seven days. I generally figure it's a good uh, idea to take some profits. So I took half of uh, the Stella that I'd recently bought, not my long-term hodl bag. I bought some more Stella. So basically I got my money back and now that's in USDC. And look, if Stella comes back down to maybe, you know, 15, 14 cents, I'll just buy back in. So I'll basically be buying uh, more uh, for the profits uh, that I took. Uh, Energy Web Token. So really, these are fairly small losses anyway over the last 24 hours. Very, very little at all. But look, some aren't. Some are still really hurting. Loopring, but they were doing well prior to that. Um, there we go. Sushi sort of been coming down. Energy Web Token. But look, there's others that are still really doing well. So the markets generally aren't looking too bad now that that kind of you know sell-off that we had and it started around sort of Thursday night here in Australia but that's Wednesday uh, you know in other places um, and yeah it's it seems like the markets have corrected themselves but this could be a bit of a fake out that's all we need to keep in our mind I'm not saying it is but it's just possible look let's start with Bitcoin let's go over here here's Bitcoin and what I want to do is I'll show you why these are in here I'm going to go down to the hourly chart because this is what I was looking at for a little while there. So we could see it was forming a bit of a pennant here. And we could see that basically the way to measure these on where it might go if you're into that trading is this equals to roughly about this. And so you just take this out of here where you think it might fall down. And then it'll give you a rough estimate of where you think it might go. So roughly 15,400 is where it might have gone. Uh, 
So if you wanted to, you could set some buyer orders in down there, or you know, if you wanted to short it and all the rest of it. Now I don't do leverage trading, but that is a way that they kind of measure it. It's not an exact science, but it can be pretty close. Uh, you know, there's some good sort of leverage traders uh, out there that generally do uh, pretty well. But look, most people who leverage trade get absolutely annihilated. It really is for the professionals, so I don't recommend it. I mean, I just use some of the tactics to have a rough idea of where the market might go. But it's broken out to the upside. But what we need to look at is that we see it hit a peak here, it rolled over, and now it's starting to make its way back up, but it could roll over and just start to keep going down. I'm not saying that's what it's going to do. I'm just saying that is a possibility. So we don't need this anymore, and we don't need this anymore. And we can remove this as well because we're going to go back to the dailies anyway. So again, look at the tortoise sh shorter time frames just to see uh, any sort of you know quicker changes that might be happening in the markets. But I generally like to zoom out. The days, the weeklies, the monthlies are more the ones that I play. So we can see Bitcoin. So we had that sell off, and now it looks like we're making our way back up. But it could be a fake out. So it could be something that just kind of pushes up and doesn't quite make it and then rolls over and we continue to come down. It's Sunday. Maybe that was just the traditional sort of weekend sell-off that we have uh, and we're getting a Sunday and a Monday pump before we really start to go higher again. We'll just have to wait and see. But what I want to show you is there's some really uh, interesting charts here that are happening at the moment. Now, Chainlink, this one, and I went over this the other day, but we'll go over it again, I think is looking very bullish at the moment. Like if you're looking for a good buy-in point uh, for Chainlink, you know, especially if you're trading against Bitcoin, because this is against Bitcoin here, it's looking pretty nice. Now, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. This is the long-term trend. This is where it's been going. And it's just up and up and up and up and up for Chainlink. Now, it keeps pumping up a little bit higher and it comes down and it'll just bounce off this line. It goes up, basically bounces off the line, comes up, bounces off the line, comes up, bounced real heavily off the line there and then it had the really big spike and then it came back down and look what it's starting to do it's getting very close to this line it wicked here but it hasn't really come down to touch it and what we can see here is it's got some confluence here it's been here before so this is a point it rejected off here it's sort of uh, traded under and then from here it pumped up came down almost touched it not quite came down touched it and rebounded off come down, wicked below it, and even this was just a wick, but it seems to be holding pretty steady here. And this to me looks like it could be a, an extremely bullish uh, position if you wanna get back into Chainlink. Now look, yeah, wouldn't we all have liked to have got into Chainlink back here, but we've missed that. We can't go back and get that. But what we can see is every time that it touches this line, it has a parabolic move. And then it'll come back and touch this line, it'll have a parabolic move come back and touch this line it'll have a parabolic move so it is finally coming back to touch this line and there's every chance it will just simply repeat itself but there are no guarantees ladies and gentlemen it could finally break this pattern and its upward trend and just start to come down and then we would have to find we have to zoom out All right where's a fair bit of confluence if we're not holding here it's down here so it could go down to the uh, 50,676 Satoshi level, you know, thereabouts. If that doesn't work, then we're coming down to sort of roughly somewhere around about here, I would say, which again is the 34,091 Satoshi level. But again, these are just, you know, it's not an exact science, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these are just, you know, sort of guesses and it's based on where it's been before. You know, is it going to do a resistance support flip? which is basically what it uh, could do here. This used to be resistance, it got up here, flipped it to support, flipped it to support sort of, excuse me, get out of my way, flipped it to support, still flipped it to support, so it has been using this as support a couple of times, as opposed to it's only really used it as resistance, you know, sort of twice here. We'll call this one uh, sort of cluster one, we'll call this one, so there's two, times it's sort of been resistance and then it's been support after here one two three you know three and a half you know let's call that four between these two so four times it's used this line as support 
and only really sort of twice has it used it as resistance. So chances are this, will, you know, I won't say chances are because again, nothing I say is financial advice, but for me, this is looking really good and I think I'm going to go uh, and put some money into Chainlink at the moment because I think this is a really good uh, buying opportunity to again, you know, get a good pump. And particularly, you know, if you're into leverage trading and that, that's what people are looking at. And please, I don't recommend leverage trading. I'm just simply showing you uh, what people use and how they read the charts. This is looking pretty juicy at the moment, but hey, time will tell. All right, synthetics, same sort of thing. Now we can see that we've been here before, this white line here, this is, uh, it's been resistance before, then it used it as support, it came back down, it wicked down, but you know, well not wicked down, but it went just below, but kind of rocketed up, so it's been support again. It's came and basically wicked down and used, used this as support. So what we can see is that it did break this trend line, uh, and it was a bit of a sort of flash crash, I guess, although it wasn't really flash because it still took a few days uh, to go down and then break back up. So let's say sort of about a week. What do we got here? This was on the 29th of October to the 8th of November. So yeah, 7th of November. So about a week uh, it fell down below and before it got back above, but now it seems to be holding this uh, downward trend line as well. And this is getting to be a tighter and tighter squeeze. So all we're doing is just waiting to see. I, w I'm, I wouldn't say rush out and like buy any synthetics at the moment, but the thing is, it doesn't have to come all the way down here to finally decide to break this. It could simply start to break it from here. So, you know, just something to keep an eye on. And really, you know, if you wanted to be, you know, as safe as you could, you're gonna wait for it actually to break this. Uh, come out and maybe come back and retest it before you get in. At the very least, break it. If not, come back and re sort of test it. Uh, and you know, again, likewise, you're waiting to see if it's going to go lower than this. Because if it goes lower than here against Bitcoin, then again, we're looking at sort of somewhere down here or maybe even down here. I don't think it'll get there personally. I think it's probably going to bounce around in here sideways for a little bit and then start to break out to the upside. But that's just my personal opinion. Ave doing something very similar to uh, Synthetics Network, except for it has already broken out of its channel. But now, this is sort of the average line. It's been here a number of times, so you could even drag this, you know, back over to here. We get this white line, and all right, go back to sort of, you know, roughly around about here. It's got some confluence here. It's been here before. This is not unfamiliar territory for it against Bitcoin. It did drop below it. Uh, and then it broke out of that and it's come back up and it's using this as support. But we just have to wait and see. It's not confirmed that we're going to start to go up yet. This still could break down. But it is looking pretty nice uh, at the moment. But I'm not rushing to do anything. I'm just going to wait and see because this still could break to the downside. If I do start to see it sort of break to the upside, well, then I'll get in because it's still a pretty good price against Bitcoin. And again, we can see that it's been in an upward trend for a really long time. You know, we can get uh, this line here. Well, that's probably not the best one to do, so we'll get rid of that one. Since basically back here, you know, we can see it has been going up. But oh, of course, a, a good retracement. And I showed this the other day. I I think it was Synthetics Network. All right, so we go from the cycle high to the cycle low. 78% correction. Again, I've spoke about this a number of times, you know, fairly, you know, not good for if it's happening to you, but a fairly average and reasonable uh, correction for an altcoin is anywhere from sort of 65% through to 85%. And if you want to round it off, you know, 75%, they can go lower and they can go higher, you know, it's not an exact science, but this is pretty close. So again, 78% retracement. Uh, would have been a pretty good time to jump in. And I did get some at here, I just didn't get enough, I wasn't sure. But look, for me, I bought my uh, Aave quite some time ago, so even with this retracement, uh, I'm still well in profit. But that's the things we're looking for. From the cycle high, come down, and if we're getting to around that 75% retracement level, that is generally a pretty good time to jump into an altcoin for the maximum amount of return. It's not to say it can't go lower, it could do an 85%, uh, 
Uh, but sometimes it can go lower, and again, only does maybe a 65% retracement. But it just seems around about 75% is the average retracement. So if you're looking for good points to get into projects, and you can see they're on a bit of a downturn, uh, and again, that's only when there's big corrections, because I mean, you know, we can do this correction over here. That's only a 50% correction, and then it started to make its way back. So again, it's not an exact science, but you know, I would say 65% to 85% uh, on a good correction is roughly where they're going to be. And again, if you just want to round it off and find the middle, 75%. So Aave, uh, still looking pretty good. Uh, it hasn't come back and retested this, although it did get close. And again, we've got some confluence here. So really, you're just waiting to see, is it going to fall down below this confluence? If it is, don't buy. If it looks like it's going to start to slowly push up or it's just you know, bouncing off here a number of times, the more times it hits here as support, the better the chance it is to go up. Although some people will tell you the opposite. The opposite. If it keeps bouncing on something and just can't uh, get above it, it could fall below. But look, that is more in maybe, well, I won't say that, but look, we're in a bull market at the moment. I think these, uh, everything's, you know, not everything. The good projects are just gonna go up for quite some time yet. And I think Aave is a great project. It is something I am super bullish on. But that is only my personal opinion. Ren BTC, let's have a look at this. This is looking really sweet at the moment. We can see that, you know, it traveled sideways for a little bit and then it started its upward sort of trend. And it pumped up really high. Now let's have a look again. What do we get here? From the cycle high to the cycle low. 67 so that was about a 70 percent retracement uh, and now it's just sort of trading sideways and things are getting tighter and tighter and tighter and again this is the line right here this is you know kind of the average mean for it uh, over the last little bit and we can see it bounces off it regularly so at the moment i would say and just my personal opinion this is looking like a sweet point to get in for maximum returns but there's no guarantees that it stays here ladies and gentlemen uh, it could break all of this at some stage. It has to be broken. So it could break to the lower side. And then again, we'll be looking for something more about sort of down here from where it's had confluence before. Uh, Wi-Fi to BTC. Uh, so this is, uh, again, this has been the average here. So look, it did come a long way down. Let's have a look at that. What was the retracement from the cycle high to the cycle low? 88%. So there you go above 75% and above 85%, but it has started to find its way back up now. So if this is something you're keen on, now look, it's had confluence here before, it's used this as support and as resistance. Now we're really just waiting to see, is this going to be a support zone or is it gonna roll over and start to come down? It's already broken out of this sort of trend line here. And look, you can even draw in some other trend lines if you want. Let's go from this trend line So we had that trend line there, and it broke out of there, uh, and then it broke out of the next one, which set the new trend line. So there's a number of uh, indicators that this is probably going to be uh, moving its way to the upside, but there are no guarantees in life. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. Um, ETH BTC. I did say, it looks like it is finding some support right here uh, on that kind of you know, 302,000, uh, 302, oh, no, that's even more. What is that? Uh, it says 9,000, 29,000, 100,000. Oh, God, I can't even read that. I think that's, yeah, 3 million Satoshi level uh, by the looks of it because, yeah, there's six zeros after it. So it looks like it's finding some support at around the kind of 3 million 39,651 Satoshi level. So again, this is against Bitcoin. So this is looking like it's finding some support here uh, and possibly ready to go up. All right, that's it from me, Sunday afternoon. Hit that like button down below, down below, sorry. Hit that subscribe button. I pull out, I put out daily content. So again, hopefully you're looking at these and you know making your own decisions about whether these are good points to get in or you know if you're, into you know leverage trading whether you decide you want to go long or short or if it, you're an investor whether this is just a good point to get in as you couldn't get in before it was all too high you know lots of information out there and hopefully i bring you some good content that will help you 
uh, in your journey but again please it's got to be your decision don't do it because I like it and I'm showing you things on the charts that you know I'm not a charting expert by any means this is just what I've learned in my time so again don't look at it and go oh he's a charting expert and must know no this is all just my own theory all right stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on that game train things look like they're picking up and I'll see you next time